National security uh, among uh, investors worries, particularly after this terror attack. Cyber expert Adam Levin is, is, says that we need to consider all options, in, including cyber war. Wouldn't people argue, though, Adam, that we are that de facto, aren't we already engaged in a cyber war? Well, I think we are. I think the cyber war has replaced the Cold War. But the recent announcement by NATO that they're also adopting a cyber defense strategy as part of their arsenal is one more confirmation of the fact that the mouse is mightier than the sword and that this is something we have to be worried about, we have to focus on. You know, during this campaign for president, we've heard a great deal about the Great Wall of Mexico. Right. But we're not hearing as much as we should about cyber, and that's a very important issue. I know during the Cold War, our, our, our triad system was uh, based on deterring, you know, between, you know, between missiles, aircraft, and submarines. The Russians couldn't take them all out. And we would be able to retaliate. You just talked about NATO using it, thinking about this from a defensive posture. Have, have, should we go a step further and even start considering offensive postures? Oh, I think we should, and I think we have. And, you know, again, we hear a lot about attacks on the U.S. by China, Russia, Iran, and North With Korea. With impunity, on, it feels like it's impunity. I, you know, the DNC is hacked. They take all this information, a lot of it on Donald Trump. And what's the retaliation? What happens? Well, the fact is that, you know, we issue press releases. The other side doesn't issue press releases when we do things to them. And we're certainly not going to talk. You know, again, the secret in, in cyber is that we don't, we don't talk about cyber and we generally don't talk about the fact that we don't talk about cyber. But isn't the root of security in general deterring? Like, for instance, I, you know, you could get a small army of people and take all the gold in Fort Knox, but it would be a tall undertaking. Uh, at, at the end of the day, wouldn't us talking about, hey, maybe successfully thwarting some of these things or retaliation, wouldn't that go to a certain degree? Would it help us in this battle? Because it feels like there's a cyber war that we don't talk about, in part because maybe we're losing it. Well, no, the other thing is that there is a debate going on in Washington between the, the NSA, who is more interested in implanting things and listening and getting knowledge about what's going on, and the military, which is saying, hey, we have to actually do something, and we have to talk about the fact that we do something. And that's a big debate, because in cyber, a lot of times it's the stealth, it's the secret things that go on that protect you. We just heard uh, Hillary Clinton talking about lone wolves, uh, these, these so-called lone, wol lone wolves inspired by things like the Inspire magazine uh, uh, that ISIS puts out. Now, all that comes through the Internet, uh, a lot of pressure on Silicon Valley uh, to do more to help. What can be done? Because if we talk in Internet warfare and cyber warfare, terrorists have done a, an amazing job in hijacking the Internet to spread their message through the West. No, and that's why recently there's, there's been a new policy uh, by the U.S. that they're really going to focus on you know, cyber defense and cyber security when it comes to terrorism as well. They hadn't really been doing that before. And what it's really designed to do is disrupt command and control communications. Right. You could actually get terrorists going to the wrong place. You could direct them because they think they're talking to a field commander or a recruiter right. when they're not. Right. And so this is also an important weapon in our arsenal. Wow. It is a new century. Thank you very much, Adam. Appreciate it. Thank you.